Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a concept called Archipelago of Ideas from Tiago Forte's book, Building a Second Brain. One of the biggest reasons that we have trouble moving projects forward or getting started is because of how we organize information. In fact, the root cause of almost all our productivity problems as knowledge workers and creatives is how we organize information. And bad organizational habits are actually a massive bottleneck to your ability to execute ideas. Fortunately, what makes MEM so powerful is the fact that you can gather all the resources for a particular project in one place, and it reduces the amount of time it takes to access exactly what you need when you need it. Otherwise, you end up spending a ton of time managing the systems that manage your information. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to use the concept of an archipelago of ideas to get all the resources you need to move a project forward a thousand times faster or to create a piece of content like a blog post or a report or an article. Now, let's get to the video. So one of the reasons that people often find themselves stuck either creatively or when they start a project is that they basically start with a blank page. And one of the best ways to overcome that obstacle is with something that Tiago Forte in his book calls a archipelago of ideas. And what an archipelago of ideas does is it allows you to gather all of your notes together so that you can have everything that you need to form the backbone of the essay so that you're not trying to do creative work and research for that creative work simultaneously. And one of the nice things about MEM is that MEM actually gives you suggestions that make putting this archipelago together very easy. So in this case, I actually know some of the things that I want to include. So you can see here that I have several different notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring in notes from a couple of the books that I want to use. One of my favorite books this year was a book called Better Than Destiny by my friend Fred Bounson, who was a guest on The Unmistakable Creative. And what you can see here is when we start to put together these different notes, because I've done what Tiago Forte calls progressive summarization, I can just start to pull together a bunch of different nuggets that, that will help me put together the backbone of this entire essay. So we're going to do this with about three different books first. So let's take a couple of different notes from Fred's book. We're going to pull together a couple of different uh, notes on different types of biases here. So I'm writing this blog post that's titled The Hidden Dangers of Irrational Optimism. So rather than starting with a blank slate, I'm actually going to start just pulling different notes from different books. So another uh, book that I want to use here is uh, something called uh, How to Navigate Life, which is a, another book that uh, was written by an unmistakable creative podcast guest. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put How to Navigate Life here. And then we're going to go ahead and just start pulling some of the various things that we want to include in this essay, potentially. And we start to put this together and you can start to see that one nice thing is that it actually gives you a lot to work with right from the start. So you're not starting with a complete blank page. There's one other book that I want to basically use, and then we'll go start putting together a couple of other Julia Gaylord wrote this really great book called The Scout Mindset, which uh, goes in detail into cognitive biases. So we're going to go ahead and pull some notes from her book as well. And yeah, we're talking about irrational optimism, so we definitely want to pull in different things that kind of lead to irrational optimism here. And so all of these quotes are related to all of this. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through all of the similar notes that I have here. And you can see basically that I have a bunch of different uh, notes. Some of them don't have anything in them. So I'm going to start putting together my own notes here. Oh. And then the other thing that you'll see here is that as we keep adding notes, Mem starts giving you more and more recommendations for these notes. And the thing that is great about that is that now you can actually start to put together a outline for this thing rather quickly. And we end up with a bunch of different notes that we can use that we can start to use as the backbone of this essay so that we're not starting this entire process from scratch. And so 
As a result, what ends up happening is you don't end up spending all your time looking for all of these different pieces of information while you're trying to write the post. You can then start to write the post. And so you have this archipelago of ideas and you can start to connect them together in different ways. And so we're just pulling together a bunch of different notes. Now, some of these may be relevant, some of these may be not. And the other thing is that because MEM makes it easy to retrieve every single thing with no friction, we can always keep adding notes as well as we keep <laughs> writing the essay. So that's the basic overview of how you use an archipelago of ideas to outline something like an article. So now let's actually go into another example and see how we might use this for a project. So one of the things that my friend Michelle Florendo had asked me about was starting a nonfiction writer's mastermind for any people who wanted to write nonfiction books. In addition to just being able to pull notes, when we use this archipelago of ideas concept, we can actually pull templates. So I have this new project launch template that I basically copied more or less verbatim from Tiago Forte's book. So what we can do here is you know, capture our current thinking. So first thing we're gonna do is rather than capture current thinking, I'm just gonna put together a bunch of different resources. And I'm gonna put together these resources in a couple of different ways. So I can actually categorize these resources. So I'm gonna first start with the different books that I know I have notes on about writing. And so now I've got some books. I can also pull some podcast transcripts. I can come here and say, okay, this is the James Clear writing process. So I'm going to go ahead and put that under notes instead of here under books. And so I have this ultimate guide to building an audience. So what you can see here is now, rather than starting this project with nothing, we're going to start with a bunch of different resources. And then I have, you know, other resources that are related to helping me execute something like this project. So I have this landing page, nine ingredients that will help you print money as a resource that I often use as a checklist for when I am putting together a new sales page for a course. And then I can just start filling this template out before I ever start this project. So basically what happens is you have this entire archipelago of ideas that really helps you start to form the basis of the project before you even start it. So that way you have a rapid increase in your execution speed for this particular project. And once you have a critical mass of knowledge or a critical mass of notes inside of MEM or for this particular project, it basically prevents you from context shifting and wasting time and moving back and forth. Because for example, if we go back to our blog post, you can see here, now I don't have to go to 20 different places to pull all of these quotes, even searching within MEM, I don't have to context shift. I can just start pulling each of these things together and start cutting and pasting them here on the top. And bit by bit, I can start to just reassemble these in an order that actually works as an essay. So I can just start to add different notes and I can rearrange them. And then we start to have this whole essay start to form. And that's the basic concept of how to create an archipelago of ideas in MEM. And if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend Tiago Forte's book, Building a Second Brain. And be sure to also check out our free ultimate guide to building a second brain. And I'll include a link in the description below. As always, feel free to leave questions in the comments.